The first thing to be aware of here is that in the epic of creation that they are referring to here, the gods weren't mining gold. The work that the gods were doing is creating the world, kind of what you would expect from a creation epic. It even specifically states that they were making mountains and rivers, such as the Tigris and Euphrates. The gods here were tired of creating the earth, not gold mining. The epic goes on to describe the following events. The gods decide to mix up themselves with clay and make man. As the version of men that they made increased in number, the noise that they made angered the gods. So they decide to kill them off with a flood. One man is instructed to build a boat, he puts animals on it, it rains for seven days and seven nights, and the man and his family are saved. There are many similarities between these Sumerian writings and to the biblical accounts of the creation of man and Noah's flood. Some people think that this is due to the writers of the Bible copying the earlier Sumerian writings. This is problematic because even the critics who specialize in this style of ancient literature say there is no evidence of literary borrowing. In fact, just the opposite. They propose that they must be referring to a common source for the information. One paper by Heidel, Millard, and Damroche concludes this way, quote, Literary dependence cannot be demonstrated. Here, as in most of the parallels in primeval history, it is considered more likely that the Mesopotamian and biblical traditions are based on a common source. Some understand this common source to be a piece of more ancient literature, while others consider it the actual event. Add to this that it's not just the Sumerian texts and the Bible that are talking about the same basic story, but obvious elements of this story can be found in almost every early culture, regardless of its location. Take for example the story of Viracocha in South America. Viracocha created the heavens and the earth. He then took large stones and breathed life into them, but they became giants, so he sent a flood to wipe them out. After the flood, he breathed into smaller stones than the first time, thereby creating smaller people which were then scattered all over the world. And in the Bible, in Genesis 6, we see something similar. The sons of God disobeyed God. They came to earth, had sex with human women, producing giants called Nephilim. The Nephilim, over time, almost eliminated the original human population, and this is one of the reasons that God sent the flood. These stories are found in some form in cultures as geographically separated as you can get. They're in China, Europe, the Middle East, they are found in Native American traditions, in South America, and many others. These similarities are too obvious to simply dismiss. Things like eight people being on the boat are mentioned in a good percentage of these stories. I personally think that all these cultures are drawing from the same original story, a story that was told only one way, and that as migrations happened from the original group, they started adding in details that were more locally important to them but that each of these cultures sincerely believed that they were passing on the true account of the origin of humanity to their descendants as this story was told. Ironically, if you take it at face value, if there really was a flood and all people except for the ones on the boat were destroyed, and if most modern cultures were descended from them, the fact that the entire world seems to have inherited the same story would make sense, because they essentially have the same eight ancestors who experienced such a dramatic event and made it a point to pass the story to each generation. I propose that something like this really did happen in ancient history. I don't personally see any logical way around it. The question I have is which, if any, of these accounts is closest to the truth. Ancient Aliens tells us that the Sumerian version is closest to the truth because they were recorded earlier. That makes sense to a point, but we have to remember that the events described in the Sumerian texts were still ancient history to the Sumerians. So the question is not so much about the date of the writing, but rather their ability to preserve the story. I'll give you a few very good reasons to seriously doubt that the Sumerian accounts should be given more weight where they differ from the others. The first is that Sumerian stories are not logically consistent. Take for example that in both the Sumerian and biblical accounts, dimensions for the boat are given. The mere fact that an important part of this story is the dimensions of the boat is interesting. But when you draw out the dimensions, you have on the one hand the Sumerian boat being a big cube, and the biblical one being described by naval engineers as nearly perfect for maintaining stability without hull damage in incredibly rough seas. Another reason not to trust the Sumerian texts where they differ from the others is that, as every Sumerian scholar knows, the Sumerians constantly change the details of their stories to suit the different situations. For example, 
text of the same story found in the Temple of Inki will differ from the ones found in the Temple of Inyana, even if they are from the same time period, but especially if they're from a different time period. To quote one Sumerian scholar, quote, inconsistencies are a regular feature of Sumerian poetry, end quote. He goes on to say that integration of different texts by the Sumerian scribes often appears somewhat careless. Compare that with the ancient Hebrew scribes, who were notorious for taking their job ultra-seriously. They had many rules that governed their copying of their sacred texts. For example, it is said that they would have to speak every letter out loud before committing it to paper. One example of a vindication of this meticulous attention to detail is with the Isaiah scroll found in the Dead Sea Scrolls. The earliest copies of the Hebrew Old Testament before the Dead Sea Scrolls were the Masoretic texts, which were copied between the years 600 and 1000 AD. So the Isaiah scroll, one of the best preserved scrolls, would be a way to prove or disprove if their scriptures had been faithfully copied by the scribes during the previous 800 years. As it turned out, they did a flawless job and the Hebrew scribes were vindicated. So when deciding which texts are more accurate as it relates to their accounts of ancient events, it's more logical to assume that the group with a tradition of accurate preservation and transmission of their texts should be given more weight than a culture like the Sumerians who seem to have very little interest in the accurate transmission of the details of their stories.